The action phase aims at developing and implementing evidence-based solutions with an audience and evaluating the results. After identifying the, uh, the solutions, students will implement them, measure the outcomes, debate on what worked or didn't work. The final objective of the action phase is to determine whether they made progress in addressing the challenge before sharing their work with the rest of the world. The action phase is made of three steps, solutions development, implementation and evaluation. Now that students have completed the investigation phase, they can begin developing solution concepts. Although the exploration of the challenge will lend to itself to multiple solutions, each group needs to focus on one single solution to design and implement. It can be interesting to ask students to share the, the workload based on personal interest and present their concepts to the rest of the cohort, to peers, professionals, etc. Solution concepts may involve an online or a physical informative campaign, community improvement projects, product developments, etc. Everything is possible and being creative is key to spread the solution to the target audience. Implementing and evaluating is the final step. Here the solution, it can be a design, a prototype, a procedure, etc., is tested in real life and evaluated on the impact it has on the challenge and the society. Students have to decide what to measure, how and how often, so that they can be consistent during the implementation phase. This way, students will make sure that they establish a robust procedure for data collection, allowing them to compare the results and to measure the impact of their solution. For example, if the initial challenge was to decarbonate a music festival, well, actually several solutions can be designed. A solar panel device allowing organizers to reduce their consumption of electricity during daytime, a friction solar system creating energies uh, thanks to the, uh, the steps of the festival goers, a solar cooling system allowing the, uh, the catering staff to reduce the consumption of electricity and fossil fuel required to keep the food and beer fresh, the organization of a zero uh, carbon transportation service allowing festival goers to join the event without their cars, etc. Et Students can measure the gas, the gas emission generated by the music and the catering equipment, the number of watts or liter of gas oil consumed, or by the participants, the number of festival goers using the zero carbon solution, the number of cars parked, etc. They can decide to measure these emissions just during the event or including the preparation and the dismounting of the festival. When students have collected their data, they can start the analysis process. They will compare the data collected at the beginning and at the end of the project. Did anything change? Did it change the way they expected? In addition to comparing the beginning and the ending data, students will also look for trends. When and where did the biggest change take place? How can they explain it? What can they say about people and how they behave at different times during the trial? This step will help students determine and explain whether the solution had the desired effect or not. In this unit, we saw in detail the three key phases of challenge-based learning. In the next unit, you will see how to assess your students when using CBL.